Welcome back to the Honda Project and we are hopefully uh, finishing up the blue unit. Yes, we have a new diagram uh, direct from the Moto Gadget website. Um, infinitely larger image than that and uh, not dissimilar from that. going to be hooking up the important stuff like the starter and the regulator and the uh, coils and the ignition unit what is the ignition unit it's this thing over here with the coils as opposed to that thing over there which is the lock so we've got our spark units on the left which are kind of a early days ECU we've got our ignition coils on the right and going off to the plugs and then in the middle we got a pulse generator which I'm assuming is something like a flux capacitor but I haven't found one meanwhile the good news is I managed to get that into one of those smaller skeletal tubes I'm going to try and route it through there if I can and then obviously we'll have to sort out the other end Oh well and good. When's he gonna start the damn thing? Well be patient. Two steps forward, one back, uh unplugged everything again, well almost everything, uh to route the cable. Now we've got it in its sheath, so it comes through there, goes over the top of the coils, through a nice little hole in the frame there. And then I'm not sure whether we're going um over or under this. Depends where the tank sits. So I'll have to get the tank off the shelf and check that. And then it'll come in here and join up again. Yep, that all fits lovely over the top, which is nice. Um, and no other fouling, so we're good to go. So having established the routing, uh, we can now probably trim those wires to a more appropriate length to fit in our blue unit. So here's the advantage of using a cheese grater um, for your electrical tray because it's got lots of holes in it. So there's the two starter motor wires coming down to eventually meet the starter solenoid. Not quite brave enough to hook anything up yet. Its power cable itself, here now at the moment, will also go through the same hole to get power from the positive terminal over here. Not quite in focus. Oh, I know. Progress is painfully slow, isn't it? At least it's entertaining, though, right? Well, having hooked everything up again, uh, I just wasted an hour at least of my life uh, because the brake light was permanently on. So I thought there's some of the wiring gone astray. So I rigged up some test stuff and uh, it was none of the above. It was actually the switch on the lever because that little doofer this isn't coming far enough back. So I've put some additional padding in there, as you can see, to hopefully put that switch off, but it kind of works. Whilst I like these levers, uh, this one in particular is um, mucking me about a bit. And bearing in mind that we've got no fluid in the system at the moment, that might push it out a little bit as well. So, um, I think we've resolved that issue. Now to the serious part. But first, a little Dutch courage. Cheers. Actually, I think it's Californian, but who cares? Now, what's he doing? Well, I've been doing a little bit more research, and uh, thanks to uh, a message, uh, cry for help, uh, not mine, uh, somebody else's who's doing the same thing uh, on exactly the same model, um, I found a, a much better complete wiring diagram, which is amazing. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, thanks to Marshall. Yeah, brilliant. Anyway, uh, and it made me rethink a lot of things, also watching another video uh, on how to do this. So uh, what's happening is, oh, I think we're going to relocate all this cobblers, i.e. the rectifier regulator and the spark units. While it was a neat idea, we'll put them elsewhere. So this other guy, Adam, kind of just randomly mounted on the frame uh, next to each other, uh, which is all well and good. But if we can, I'm going to tuck them in there because I think that would be neater. 
but I'm not sure if I can. We'll see. Might have to modify them slightly. Take those little strengthening brackets out. So that's uh, plan D, E or F, I think, <laughs> for those. And then the regulator, of course. And that, I think, will fit nicely there. Mm. Except upside down, obviously. Like, like so. So what we need to do is um, get something for it to attach to, right? Something like that. It's only a cardboard cutout. It's only a model. But we've translated it to this, so we need to cut that out now. Slightly revised shape. Thanks to somebody pointing out that it won't fit like that, will it? There it is, just need to secure it now. As you know, I'm not a welder, I don't have any welding equipment, uh, so it's literally uh, riveted. Yeah, and uh, it's solid enough. Version two, a little more elaborate and a little better fitting. Uh, so, um, we've still got our rivet up here. And then we're going to rivet it into the frame as well with these wings. And we've got a little bit more down the bottom here. Because uh, the other one wasn't quite long enough. Yeah, I cut it short. Just uh, knock those down with a hammer to uh, follow the curve of the frame on both sides. That's a beautiful fitting little piece there. Riveted. So, now just a question of marking up those holes for this boy. And it's a bit tight, as you can see. And there it is, in its new location. And this is where I'm going to put these on the bottom of that crossbar there. I'm going to just use um, some seriously strong sticky tape, double-sided. And if we need a bracket, we'll make a bracket. But I don't think we do. Uh, you can get a little punch drunk uh, looking at all this kind of stuff, um, trying to work out what's what. No, 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 this isn't punch, this is one. Anyway, I started plugging in some of this stuff and um, off the original loom and as you can see the connectors are you know, beyond horrible. Uh, some of them are okay but then the wiring itself going into that looks a bit iffy and uh, downright nasty. So yes, we're going to be veering off on another tangent because I've bought some of these. Um, and we're going to be learning how to um, how to kind of fit them. There's lots of options out there. I chose these ones because I'm kind of familiar with them. Uh, they certainly use them on Ducati and uh, MV. So um, yes, I'm very familiar with them. So we're going to get rid of all this nasty 40-year-old snot. And that got me thinking about other things uh, like speedos. Uh, yeah, this is the Kawasaki. The uh, the blue unit comes with a speed sensor that you can do uh, you can put on a normal kind of speedo. That's if I've still got it. I, it might be in there somewhere. Or I've had a quick look, can't find it. Or we just go for a GPS unit again because um, they're nice and simple and relatively cheap. I don't think I'm going for a motor gadget unit because they're not cheap. Let's get sticking. Again, uh, cleaned all the surfaces with this first. See if it's still there later on in the day. Oh, I guess we'll find out next time. We'll also be looking at wiring up those new plugs, which will be exciting, interesting, and probably frustrating. And talking of frustrating, uh, we'll be carrying on with the uh, the Moto Gadget Blue unit. Mm. Yeah. So thanks as always for watching, uh, I'm glad you tuned in, I uh, hope I didn't disappoint you if you were hoping to see me finish the blue unit, but uh, we will get to it I promise, uh, so if you haven't already, subscribe down here somewhere, because you'll need that for the update, yeah, uh, if you thought the video was any good, give it a thumbs up, and of course, encourage others to watch my lunacy.